everyone's pets are going missing. So I am going to transform an entire ancient city into a secret underground palace to protect my Minecraft dog, Dexter. Oh yeah, and this is all happening because the server can't agree on whether cats or dogs are better. And why am I choosing to hide my dog away in an ancient city of all places? Well, mostly because it's quite literally the last place anyone would look. But a nice bonus is that no mobs can even spawn in ancient cities. And if you're wondering about the warden, the most dangerous boss in the entire game. Well, these Shriekers technically summon them. Break them, and no more warden. With the Shriekers destroyed, there's only one more thing to do before I can begin turning the ancient city into my secret underground palace base thing. You see this skulk? Yeah, it looks very bad, and it's literally everywhere. I don't really want this skulk to be in the final build. So I'm going to destroy every last bit of it in this cave. And no one suspects a thing about my plan. Let's begin. Honestly, this might be the most satisfying thing I've ever done. And at this rate, this process is gonna be a breeze. I regret all of my life choices. All I do is mine skulk and farm bread. Oh, and also mine skull. This was taking forever, and I could not figure out a way to make the process faster. I even tried burning the vines. It didn't work. I'm going to need a really good plan to get this skull destroyed, especially as we move on to the walls and ceiling. Scaffolding is not going to work. It's honestly just the most annoying block in the world to use. Or it might just be that I'm bad at the game. How do I plan to reach the ceiling without scaffolding? All I need to do is go to the end, find an end city, acquire a shulker, and bring it all the way back to the overworld. So that it can make me float, and then I can mine the skull that way. You know, it sounds dumber now that I say it out loud, but it's worth a shot. But before I can even think about doing that, give me one second. Yep, feels good to be rich. Now, I don't plan to bore you with the details of why bringing a shulker back to the overworld is quite possibly the most annoying process ever. So instead, boom, bam, bop. Uh, 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 that didn't work. Just flying out in the massive expanse of nothingness. Quite a terrifying position to be in, honestly. But it's all going to be worth it. Let's finally get back to work. I was actually pretty convinced this would be a massive failure. But I have surprised myself today. And I've now mined 26,000 skull. And it's finally becoming noticeable, especially when compared to the beginning of the video. I also designed a nice railway to move the shulker around, but if I want to build this all over the cave, I'm going to need a lot more spruce wood. Checkmate. Mother Nature. And done. With the rail. Dexter, I'm gonna get this skulk mined if it's the last thing I do. I cannot have you sitting on the dirty floor any longer. <laughs> to anyone that wants a visual representation of all the skulk I mined, here it is. 50,000 skulk blocks in all its glory. And no, the cube is not hollow. You know, I really should be happy that the skulk is finally gone. But to be honest, this railway looks too terrible to include in the final build. Much better. With all of the skulk gone and the cave fully patched up, I was finally able to begin with the actual project. And all I needed was a few shulker boxes of materials. Let's just brush over the many hours of work that it 
took to get the- now I'm gonna start by building this small little room at the entrance. And it's going to act as the doorway from the outside world into the cave. But for right now, I'm gonna use it to hide Dexter and his entire family. I also made a secret piston door. That's pretty cool. Now, I plan to turn this place into a beautiful palace for all dogs to be safe, but I'm also somewhat doing it so that I have a safe place to be because my enemies, calling themselves the cat lovers, are willing to kill people to take their dogs. So, hopefully, I don't have to worry about that. And that is the center pathway done. And it's already looking so cool with the color palette I chose. But in the grand scheme of things, this is only a small fraction of the entire build. So let's keep going. I actually just thought of a cool idea. I could make this strip of floor a garden. Then I can rebuild these pillars to actually look good. Make the garden better. Yeah, that is looking pretty sweet. Now, I just have to do it all over again. But after completing the entrance pathway to the build, I had a massive problem. How much quartz do you think this small part of the ancient city took? Five stacks? Ten stacks? Maybe even half of my supply? All of it. My supply is completely gone. It took me over three hours of mining to get two shulker boxes of quartz blocks for all of it to get used up instantaneously. But then I thought, hmm, piglins trade for quartz. Maybe I can get gold from the server's gold farm and get quartz that way. Absolutely not. 30 minutes of work for four puny stacks of quartz blocks. So what options do I really even have left? I'm going to need hundreds of stacks of quartz blocks. And there's no real efficient way to get them. Well, I actually have one idea. But before I can even think about acting on it, I'm going to need a few things. First, being an iron farm. I'm being heavily conservative with my quartz for this pathway. And it is coming along, but I've already had to go mining for more. Okay, this is getting too dramatic. Really, all I plan to do is build a stacking raid farm, which is currently the most efficient way of getting emeralds in the entire game. And you may be wondering, why emeralds of all things? Well, mason villagers will give you quartz in exchange for emeralds, meaning I can get a lot of quartz blocks really fast. Also, I don't really need anything major for the raid farm at this point. It's just really complicated and I don't want to build it. So instead, I choose to advance my base with an iron farm. Forgot about that feature. Also, this collection platform is too close. And that is the iron farm done. A great first addition to the build, considering it will make me over 2,000 iron per hour. That's pretty good. Now, I could go on to build the raid farm and get it over with, fixing my huge apparent quartz issue. But no, I'm on a roll with this iron farm, and this base is still missing two very important pieces. Every Minecraft player has things to smelt and things to store. I... Thing. Yes, item farms are useful, but what my over-the-top reconstruction of an ancient city really needs is the essential. Firstly, I need a place for my furnaces, but not any kind of furnace. Rather, a quad super smelter with infinite fuel. But first, I need a beacon. Did I mention this video has very harsh tangents? Well, this is not the first or the last. This might have actually been the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Let's all just pretend like this beacon was acquired through my sheer skill in this game. Let me also remind you that no one can find out about this project. I mean, Dexter will die. The project will be completely ruined. I am forced to only use the beacon when no one is online. And now we can actually go on to build the super smelter. Also, I thought this moment of me using a normal furnace was cute. At least I was smelting something good. On the other hand, I am STILL mining for quartz. I need to get this stuff built fast.
All this bad boy needs now is infinite fuel. And if you're wondering how that's even possible in Minecraft, it's really just duplicated carpet which is somehow a bug in this game. And this splits it up between the four super smelters. The sheer amount of carpet. I, this is awesome. And that's the quad super smelter with infinite fuel done. But as a Minecraft player, I still have many items to put away in chests to likely never see again. So I think a custom storage system is underway. In my opinion, Deep Slate should be instant mineable. Do not attempt to change my mind. Also, did I mention that I hate mining? I have a really cool design in mind for this storage system. If you stack seven alternating shades of glass, you produce this really cool effect. So if I make the entire floor and ceiling in this way, it'll look really sick. And you may also be like, wow, Tazo, that's such a genius idea. You are so incredibly cool. I got this idea from Sandiction. But it's fine, because I have to put in actual effort getting an ungodly amount of glass. 108 stacks, to be exact. All done. Let's finally smell all of this into glass. Get infinite dye, which is somehow a bug in this game. Like seriously, what is even happening? And place all of the glass. Well, that looks awesome. Now it's time to build the actual storage system. Oh, I'm mining quartz again. Yes, I will build the raid farm soon enough. You can literally put anything in here and it will automatically sort into all of these chests. And it was not worth the effort, but it is cool. This officially puts our progress of rebuilding the ancient city at around 20%. Yeah, let that sink in. All of this work for a measly one-fifth of the build to be complete. But to be fair, the project is really coming along. And I am now way richer than anyone else on the server could ever dream of. I mean, did you see the sheer number of hoppers I had to use in the storage system? I mean, if it were up to me, I'd want to put all of this iron on display. Amazing, I know. Might as well pay respects to the fallen iron golems while we're at it. And now it is officially time to build the stacking raid farm. I know, you you never thought this day would come. But my craving of wealth must now be satiated with emeralds. And quartz, I never want to go to the nether again. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to understand how this thing works. All I know is that it produces a whopping 128,000 emeralds per hour. The iron farm has nothing on this. Yeah, I think I'll just AFK here for a few hours and get all of the emeralds I will ever be able to spend. Like, ever. Um... Literally everything about this just feels so wrong on so many levels. Now you may be wondering how I actually plan to get all of these emeralds turned into quartz. Well, I have a really cool plan. And the way it works might honestly blow your mind. This small device will allow me to do something called void trading. If I get in and open this chest, I will get sent through the portal. A mason villager is waiting on the other side, ready to sell me an impressive 12 quartz blocks. But the catch is, if I let the water push me back through the portal and then make the purchase, when I go back, I can buy the quartz blocks again. Honestly, this project is just teaching me that Minecraft has a lot of really bizarre bugs. Now that I'm finally back with an endless supply of diorite and quartz, let's celebrate by making the left side the best section yet with four brand new item farms. Firstly, I thought I would take my revenge on skeletons for everything they've done to me. And it looks just as funny as I was hoping. I'm actually going to need a lot of honey for future projects. Nah, I'm just kidding. I made this entire farm just to drink the honey. Bone meal will be really useful for spreading moss around the ancient city. But its main purpose links directly to the fourth and final farm. Now I never have to spend another moment leaving the ancient city to get wood. I can basically just live down here now. I mean, with five item farms, a super smelter, an over-the-top storage system. The only thing this base is really missing is a place for me and Dexter to party. 
without the fear of the entire server hunting us down. I think a dance floor will be perfect for this area. But the design I have in mind calls for 450 observers. I'm going to need a stone farm for this, which means I also need to get another beacon for permanent haste too. I just love going on long winding tangents. That was over lava. Oh my god. I lost basically everything. Now, dying and even losing some items wouldn't normally be the end of the world for me. But many members of the cat lovers were online to see me make this fatal mistake. I mean, I was going to be made fun of for the rest of time. All of the work I did to protect Dexter and stay anonymous during the war was all going to be for nothing. And yet, somehow, that's not even close to what actually happened. Estelina, one of the most notorious members of the cat lovers offered to help me get my gear back. I, I thought we were supposed to be mortal enemies, not like helping each other. It wasn't a scheme to kill me as well. I got my stuff back and I bought her McDonald's for the trouble. All this time, this fear I've had for some members of the server was clearly misguided. Did I really need to be hiding out 150 blocks underground all alone? Yeah, honestly, I just wish this war would be over already. Killing pets isn't exactly something I want to stand by anymore. That's a curveball. Estelina and I had similar interests. We didn't want this mindless war to go on any longer. So despite the potential risks, we devised a plan to finally bring the server back together. <laughs> How are you doing the sound effect on command? <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Estelina agreed to turn this back portion of the build into a massive garden to prove to the server that the two sides of this rivalry can actually work together. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but once the project is done, it will be revealed to the public as an open space for everyone to hang out. Estelina and I also want to keep our parts of the build a secret until the big reveal at the so, end. So, massive moss wall. I think I can finally get back to work on the palace. And to start, I'm going to be doing two things I never thought I would. I'm installing five permanent beacons into the ancient city and building a cat to stand guard. Okay, that is such an awesome effect. The leaves make it literally impossible to see the pot. So hopefully no one snooping around is going to consider jumping down. Back in the ancient city, I can finally build the stone farm and make the 450 observers for the dance floor I started ages ago. You didn't think I'd stop at just a dance floor, right? Say hello to Amethyst Spikes with ribbons hanging off of them. A restaurant, a secret underground drug potion lab. It's a potion lab. A massive pool, balloons, and a stand to store all of my golden carrots. Void trading is way too overpowered. Finally, with some actual pathways to get around, including a convenient way to get up to the bone meal farm, a massive stalactite trophy room to put my rare items in, and some amethyst spikes and hanging lamps to really bring the area together, the left side of the palace is officially done, putting the build well above 50% complete. All that's left is the center strip of the palace, the main focus, the stuff everyone will see when they first enter. I'm making a McDonald's. Literally everyone on the server is making a McDonald's. So I thought I'd make the best one. And this pathway design I came up with is really bringing this place together. In this first building, you can order your food, get some nice snacks and drinks. And of course, this McDonald's is rich, just like real life weird name for a chicken. And here is the play area with a sandbox, fully functional slides, a crack in the floor. It's a one-way portal back to the surface, just like every McDonald's in real life. And in here, you have a nice area to enjoy your food. Oh, hey, Estelle is working on the garden. Anyways, for the left and final branch of the palace, I am going to make something a lot more meaningful. And I think it should be something to honor Shulkers for playing such a huge role in this whole project. Luckily for me, this little guy has been chilling up here ever since I finished mining the skull. Also, a little known fact about Shulkers is that they can only teleport up to eight blocks away from themselves. So if I give it nowhere to go except for the top of this glass block, it will float? 
Took you long enough. Now let's just fully encase it into glass so that it's protected. Now for the actual build, I want it to be kind of a supernatural shrine of sorts. And that can be achieved simply by adding some floating rings around the shulker and then some chains holding the shulker in place. Then I can connect the center to this pathway through the shrine. I will also bring the path over here so that I can build a nice little pond area with possibly the most creative thing I've ever written. And that makes the Shulker Shrine done. Definitely the most unique thing I've added to this build yet. We are now within arm's reach of completing the palace. The only thing left is the center. Now, my plan with the center has always been to replace the warden statue with a super detailed statue of a dog. But considering my agreement with Estelina and my mission to put this dumb war to an end, I'm going to make both a dog and a cat officially making this build a place of peace. Also, each reinforced deep slate block used in the warden statue is mineable. It just takes a minute to break each block, even with efficiency 5 and haste 2. I love Minecraft. You know, I wasn't too sure about the walls as I was making them, but the mesh of patterns and blocks I used gives them such a cool look for the center of the palace. And in between the walls, I'm going to build a beautiful little alcove. And it's going to be for my pet fish, Robert. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Now let's move on to making the statues. I want these things to be absolutely perfect. So I'm going to design them in a creative world first and then recreate them on the server. And if you can't tell, the statues are going to be made out of solid gold. I am estimating needing almost 2,000 blocks of gold for these things in total. Which is like 150,000 gold nuggets. Thank God the server's gold farm is still working. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that this is more gold than most of you guys have ever seen at once. This is actually the coolest thing I think I've ever built in Minecraft. As a final touch, I'm going to terraform the ground so that it's not so flat. And then vegetate literally everything. And this small change alone should hopefully bring the cave to life. Done. Hello, Estella. Get on. Shut up. I'm done. Get on. On. I'm done. I'm already on. I haven't seen behind this moss wall in actual months. I mean, to be fair, it was just the old ancient city. Oh. <laughs> I'm just gonna get on in here. Oh my god. This looks so cool. What? What's, uh, what's your opinion on trees? You, you're a big supporter of team trees? Of course you are. Okay, let's go around. We've got this silly little quirky little bridge that goes underneath the... Un underneath? It goes <laughs> underneath over, the river. We've got a bunch of lovely little flowers. A large variety of colors. Just like the LGBTQ flag. we got like whatever shape this is. I think that's a circle with like an indent at the top. I don't know. Anyways, let's I think that's a there. heart. I think that's a heart, Asana. I said it's a circle with an indent at the top. And it's <laughs> okay. The top. Oh. Uh, uh, hey, 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 come back. Hey, okay. Come back. I'm sorry. I go first. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, this is a uh, cat pond. You go meow meow and stuff. And then you got a dog. It goes like... <laughs> well, I do have to say, I am impressed. And this build is going to make an amazing addition to the palace. And with that, it's done. This palace captures everything I had hoped it to be ever since the beginning. It feels so cool to walk along the paths of this build because it almost feels like you're in a fairy tale. While this has taken four long months to complete, I think it's the first thing I've made in Minecraft that I can truly be proud of. But I cannot forget why I began building this in the first place. Enough dogs and cats have died to the hands of the server members over such a minuscule opinion. So let's finally show everyone what we can create together and end this war once and for all. I've brought you all here today because I, I've been working on something undercover during the months of this server. And I think it's time today that I finally, I show you guys. As you can see, a new path has formed. If you look up, you will see that we are descending further and further. That's so cool. Wait, you can actually see the sky, like, yeah. all the way down here. Hey, why, so why, cool. would you, why did you spend so much time that's doing so, this? That's so much effort. It's but you guys can see so just silly. how far below we have reached the deep slate layer. I'm gonna need you 
you guys to stop right here for a second so I can oh. go forward? Because after you turn this corner, you'll see everything. Okay. All right. You guys may I'm enter. I, I got I got butterflies. Whoa! What the? Yo! Yo! What? This is exactly where the ancient city was. What? <laughs> 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 yeah. Wait, no, now this wasn't just to show off. The reason that Estelina built the garden for this build is because ever since this server started, we've been fighting over cats and dogs to put it simply and this build is meant to represent what we are throwing away by fighting yeah, ta wait tazo you, you are aware this this war this war's been over for a good couple weeks or so now right no one's no one cares anymore this is old news yeah what yeah.